Hello, this is Ozark Aviation. Welcome to my first episode of my GeoFS Flight Simulator series. Today we'll be discussing basics, scenery, flight controls, and aircraft, including system requirements of GeoFS Flight Simulator. So, let's get started. with our system requirements. So I'm going to show you my system requirements that I have right now. I'm actually using a laptop, which is not the best, but that's what we have right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go to settings, and we're going to go to about. So right now I'm running an HP NV 13 inch laptop. It's got an Intel Core i7 7500U CPU, so it's a 7th gen Intel processor. It's actually capable of reaching 3.48 GHz, even though its base speed is 2.7 GHz. I've got 8 GB of RAM. And I'm running Windows 10 Home Edition version 1803. And if you didn't already know, my manufacturer of this computer is Hewlett Packard. So basically for GeoFS, all you need to do is go online. For GeoFS, Google Chrome works the best. You can use Mozilla Firefox or other internet browsers. I just wouldn't recommend using Internet Explorer. So we're going to go ahead and launch Google Chrome. Keep in mind, I also do have a shortcut on my desktop, but for this purpose, I'm not going to use it. So we're going to go ahead here. First of all, we're going to search up GeoFS. This is their homepage website, geo-fs.com. You can see a lot of their aircraft that they have on here. And just a basic description about their flight simulator. You can go here and say fly, or you can go to www.geo-fs.com forward slash geofs dot php. And that's going to take you right to the flight simulator. So now that we've reached the flight simulator, basically all you have to do is take off. Before we take off, I'm going to do a brief overview of the flight simulator. So we're taking off from XNA, Northwest Arkansas Regional Airport today, and we're going to be flying to TUL Tulsa International Airport, and our aircraft today is a Boeing 737 MAX 8. It's basically for your flight controls. All you need to know are your keyboard inputs. So for GUFS, by default, your controls are set to mouse. I don't like using the mouse, I like using the keyboard. Also, by default, roll and yaw mixing is also enabled. So that's basically what that does is when you press the arrow keys, it mixes your mixes your inputs into controlling both the ailerons and the elevators. I don't like that because when I disable it, it gives me more control over what the aircraft is doing. These are some of your other controls I will go into later. There are also other options you can. Controller simulation, multiplayer, I don't like multiplayer. In controller graphics, I have my graphics set to the to the highest level. You also control your weather, time of day illumination, cloud cover, the wind, etc. Let's take a look at the aircraft that they offer. These are their community contributed aircraft. They have many developers that have develop these aircraft, GX, FLDG, King Solomon. If you want your best flight experience, you're best going with these aircraft because they've been developed by GUFS for GUFS and they're not community contributed. So we're going to go back to navigation and this is our map. So basically, these are controls you need to do. The hard bracket, your hard bracket keys are flaps up and flaps down. And I'll go into these later. Those are flaps down, so I'm going to go ahead and extend the flaps. Keep in mind, when you extend the flaps, the flap also go down. I'm also going to go full screen. 
you can see that by this indicator down here that my flights my, my flaps indeed have gone out extended so basically the, to take off into UFS all you need to do is increase the throttle and page up increases the throttle and page down increase decreases the throttle so now is when I'm going to go into these keys When you have roll yaw mixing disabled, this key controls your rudder and your landing gear when you're on the ground. So you're going to use this key when you want to make the plane go left, and you're going to use this key when you want to make the plane go right. And to control your ailerons, you're going to use your right and left arrow keys. And to control the up-down motion of the aircraft, the pitch, you're going to use the up-and-down arrow keys. So now I'm going to go ahead and take off. and put the throttle to 100%. And you can see when I'm pressing the carrot keys, the plane does indeed You can see the flight controls are not too great, but this is what you have to deal with in GOFS because it is free. Now that we've gotten off the ground, I'm going to go ahead and retract my flaps. And the G button retracts your gear, so I'm going to go ahead and retract that and try to get to around 10,000 feet. And then I'll go into how to engage the autopilot. Since we're flying to Tulsa, I'm going to zoom out a little bit on my map, and this is Tulsa right over here, so I'm going to try to get over there. You can also see over here the scenery isn't quite working at its best performance right now. It comes with things that are free, as expected. So you've reached 4,000 feet now, as shown by the altimeter. These are your controls down here, this is your throttle, this is your compass, that's your rate of descent or climb, that's your altimeter, it's your radio altimeter, and that's your airspeed, knots. I'm manually controlling the airplane right now. We've hit 6,000 feet now, so I'm going to go ahead and enable the autopilot by pressing the A key. You can see now it says autopilot engaged. I'm going to go ahead and put my altitude to 10,000 feet and put my speed to 400 knots. And the plane is now going up. That's basically all there is to it. I use my keyboard to enter the values for the autopilot. You can also, if you have your cursor inside the box, you can also use your up and down arrow keys to control all your parameters in here. So now since we're getting to Tulsa, I'm going to have to adjust our heading by about 90 degrees to get to Tulsa. So 90 degrees would be about 240 degrees. So I'm going to put in 240 there heading. And the plane is indeed turning. Alti altitude is set to 10,000 feet, we're almost at 10,000 feet. So once we reach 10,000 feet, I'm going to increase the altitude to our cruising altitude. But for this flight, I'm going to make 25,000 feet because it's going to be a really short flight. So you can pan around on your map by click holding and dragging. You can see around the aircraft, FLDG's done a pretty nice job with the simulation on this aircraft. And there are also multiple camera views you can go to, such as right wing and left wing, or cockpit cam, which I don't really like because this is all it is. It's actually pretty lame, I'm sorry. So generally you're going to use the follow cam, which is the standard view. I'm going to adjust your heading a little more because we're going to the northwest. 
because we're not we're heading a little too far south also there we go now I reached about 10,000 feet so I'm gonna go to our cruising altitude 25,000 feet and the aircraft will now climb You can see when I'm not doing anything, this map is moving around over here. That's a glitch in GUFS. I can't do anything about it. Also, sometimes the map will glitch and the planes will be randomly floating when they're actually on the ground to a different user. Right now, there are 52 people online. And when you're at big airports like JFK or Miami and those kind of airports, when you have a lot of people in those airports, it's really a mess. The problem with GeoFS also is it's basically free play online flight simulator. Some of these planes over here you can see on the map. Some of them are other players, but most of them, specifically in my area because nobody really flies here, that's why I chose this location, is live air traffic. Yes, GeoFS does have live air traffic. With a free online flight simulator, it's basically every man for himself. Which makes it really annoying to take off out of big airports like Los Angeles, San Francisco, Miami, those kind of airports. But since we're taking off out of a little tiny airport out in Northwest Arkansas, we didn't have to deal with that. So we got our altitude, heading, and speed all put into the autopilot. I'm going to come back a little bit later and begin our descent into Tulsa. So now that we're getting close to Tulsa, you can see I've already decreased my altitude and decreased my speed a little bit. There is no air traffic control in here either, so it is free and that's what you get. I'm going to go ahead and analyze airports here that we have in Tulsa, there are many options, because Tulsa is a pretty big airport. So it looks like 36 R is right here. 26. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get on this runway down here. So I'm gonna try to land on 36 R. Let's decrease our altitude. Decrease our speed. See, we're getting into the Tulsa metro area now. The airport should be right over here somewhere.
Uh, this is a little bit of a short runway, so. I'm going to undershoot the runway a bit, but it's alright. Spoilers, brakes, put the throttle all the way back for four reverse thrust. I'm steering the plane right now. And we have successfully landed on runway 36R at TUL Tulsa International Airport. The E button cuts your engine, so I'm going to cut my engines right now and I'm going to apply the brakes. Put my spoilers down, put my flaps all the way up. And the semicolon key puts on your parking brake. That's all there is to it. That's GFS Free Online Flight Simulator. Basics as well as a flight from XNA to TUL. If you enjoyed this video, please drop it a like. And remember to subscribe to my channel, Ozark Aviation. And always remember, here at Ozark Aviation, for the power of flight.